Whoa, whoa there, chum. Stop a second and introduce yourself. Me? I'm Boris, Boris Tallstaff, ace reporter at the Ravenwood Student Gazette. I make the noise, I rattle the cages, I ask the tough questions, like, what's the deal with magic? Where did it come from? How did we learn it? We need to ask these questions, and, if there's time, answer them. Books, huh? You know, you might be onto something there. But all the best history books were stolen by ghosts looking for the order of... something. If you happen to find any of these books, bring them back my way, kid. I'll condense them into one Cracker Jack article on the history of magic. This quest has multiple simultaneous objectives. You can see them all by opening your quest log and pressing the arrow keys on this quest. Use these arrow keys to select the objective you wish to complete first, and the quest arrow will point you to it. Life magic was said to have been discovered by the earliest inhabitants of the Ravenwood, guided by none other than Grandfather Tree himself. He instructed his early disciples to plant trees and tend to a grove to learn the complex interactions of all living things. As these early theurges advanced in their studies, so too did their gardens improve, eventually sprouting the sentient spell trees. Not just of life magic, but all the schools. Each tree embodied a new form of magic, a new aspect of existence. It was through their growth, study, and teaching that magical law was tested, explored, and codified. In the beginning, there was the Dragon Titan, an immortal being capable of burning an entire world or rekindling a soul's lost spark. From the embers left in its wake, there came the race of dragons who harnessed the power of fire to rule the lands. As fire magic passed to younger races, dragons were pushed out of the fledgling worlds, seeking refuge neath the sleeping form of their ancestor. Their drake offspring formed alliances with roving human clans to rebel against their parents, ultimately establishing the Empire of Dragonspire. The ancient Tritons were creatures of the sea and heirs to the power of the Storm Titan. It is thought they used their command of lightning to create technological wonders. But, if true, their inventions were lost to uncertain tides. The Tritons isolated themselves from their dragon and giant contemporaries, but were often blamed for cataclysms on the land or in the skies. Eventually, they retreated to hidden oceans, seldom ever seen again, though some suspect there is a world of Tritons waiting to be found. In its most rarefied form, myth is the magic of the mind, the energy of thought and imagination. But in its current application, the myth school is relatively young, relying as it does on fables and legends that needed first to be written. Conjuration was discovered by a bard named Jack Stanley Kane, who sang a troll song so well the troll came to life and attacked the audience. The performance received mixed reviews, but the monster summoning was embraced by everyone, from tyrants to toddlers, and remains in practice today. Traditional theory holds that there are two broad categories of magic. Elemental, fire, ice, storm, and spiritual, life, death, and myth. Legends of astral magic from ancient Celestia often complicated those old definitions. But there is yet to be physical evidence of the practice. It was ultimately the discovery of balance magic on Crocotopia that upended the previous paradigms and introduced a composite sorcery that blended the powers of the elemental schools while also being able to enhance or debilitate spiritual powers. 
Today, balance is considered one of the core seven schools of magic, but many institutions have yet to fully incorporate it into curricula. The original practitioners of death magic were shunned by their societies, written off and punished as plague carriers and spirit thieves. And it's true that many of ill intent found a school with such spooky spells thematically amenable. The worst such group was the cult of the Corrosive Chorus, a sect from ancient Azteca who loathed the Song of Creation and sought to unwrite it. They traveled across nascent skyways, summoning banshees and spectral skulls to scream a discordant melody that could unmake worlds. Some believe Bartleby himself intervened to stop them, cursing the death cult with eternal life, sealed forever in a soundproof prison. In the first world, the children of Lady Nightstar, the Grandmother Raven, battled constantly. Titans they were, embodiments of ice, fire, and storm. Their conflict shook the world, but by the time of the spiral, only their offspring remained. Giants were the descendants of the Ice Titan, who used his power to create frost castles from... Like their ancestor, they battled the dragons on the ground until the wars decimated both races. The giants retreated to the world now known as Grizzleheim, where the few who still remain rule the frigid realm of Wintertusk. You found the books on the ancient history of magic? Let me get my notepad out and uh, tell me everything you learned. Wow, that's a lot. Gonna need a minute here, pal, to process all that. Okay, I'm good. But all the answers in those books just bring up more questions. Like, what happened to these titans? And what's with the sentient plants? You've seen them. The trees with the faces in Ravenwood. Every school has one. Except Death and Balance. But what do they do? What are they for? Why don't Death and Balance have one? People have a right to know. We need to get the straight dirt from the horse's mouth. Meaning, go ask all the trees themselves. While you do that, I'll study the books. What are we, spell trees? Why? We are the offshoots of the great grandfather tree. He who, with his sister grandmother Raven, sang the song of creation and wove the spiral into being. Life magic in particular resonates with that song, uses its chords and verses to stitch wounds and men's spirits, to heal a fragmented world. And the Titans responsible for that sundering? They were lulled to sleep by Bartleby himself. May they sleep evermore. We spell trees aid in the invention of new spells and the crafting of treasure card. I am the tree of myth. Mine is the burden to remember the stories of old heroes and monsters. It is from these tales that misspells are born. Speak to me to learn recipes for misspells. The other trees hold similar recipes for their own schools. What's cooking, wizard? Oh... I think it's me. I am raw fire, after all. Undiminished by any contradictory forces. Huh? Oh, all magical schools have an opposite. A school to which they're vulnerable, but against which they're strong. Fire melts ice, but melted ice douses fire. Similarly, Life and death contrast, as does the creativity of myth with the destructiveness of storm. Balance? Yeah, I guess we do all sort of balance each other out. That's a good way to look at it, wizard. 
How long have we been here? Oh, as long as I can remember. I don't know if we are the first, but these are the only spell trees I've known. Well, except for Mortis, the spell tree of death. I hear he came from elsewhere, but I know not where. Alas, he is, perhaps, ironically, dead. Destroyed with the death school in Malister's tantrum. So we cannot ask him. So, wizard, Calvin told you about Mortis and that he came from elsewhere. But Blossom said we all came from Bartleby. Confused? Well, both are correct. Bartleby's roots stretch invisibly to every world in the spiral. And in any of those worlds, spell trees can bloom. A balanced tree? Hmm. I've never met one. It's possible one is out there somewhere. You need only to look. You talk to the trees? They think the death tree is dead? There may be a world of balanced trees? Myth is weak against storm? What a scoop! This will make for a great article on the history of magic. And don't worry, I'm happy to share a byline. What was your name again? Fantastic! Till next time, pal.